Today I'm going to be unboxing a Microsoft Surface Pro 9. This is actually going to be my new editing tablet. That's right, you heard that correctly, editing tablet. I run a travel channel called Vacation Impossible here on YouTube, and there are certain benefits to getting videos out quickly. Being first to market has a serious competitive advantage. For example, if you are the first time going on a brand new cruise ship, as we often are, or if we are on the road and we see something amazing, it's often beneficial to be able to record and edit right away, partly because in the editing process, you will also notice that maybe you need some extra pickup shots, some B-roll, whatever that might be. And so having the ability to edit on the road is actually hugely powerful. Now I've been using a Microsoft Surface Pro 7 for the last four years, and it's getting a little long in the tooth. It's still powerful enough to edit and render 4K video quite well. However, the hard drive capacity is becoming a little bit of an issue, and uh, sometimes the USB port's a little finicky, and the micro SD card reader seems like it might be going. So because of that, and I figured it's a good time to upgrade, I decided to invest in a Surface Pro 9. So this, along with the keyboard, cost me about $2,500 Canadian all in with shipping and taxes, environmental fees, everything you can think of. A little less than $2,500 for all of this. Not bad for as powerful a machine as this is. So the model that I got is an i7 processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte hard drive. So this represents an upgrade from my old device in several ways. I'm going from a seven to a nine. I'm going from an i5 to an i7. I'm going from eight gigabytes of RAM to 16 and the internal memory from 128 gigabytes to 256. So in pretty much every way, this is an upgrade. This is not the top of the line available Surface Pro though. Had I gone for max specs, I would have been spending something in the neighborhood of 4000 Canadian. And so this was a compromise between cost and power. And it does represent a substantial upgrade. And again, as I said, my Pro 7, which had an i5 processor and only 8 gigabytes of RAM and only 128 gigabytes of internal memory, did fine. I could still edit and render 4K video in a timely fashion with relative ease. And because it is a Windows tablet, and I do recommend Surfaces if you are wanting an editing tablet, because it's natively built for Windows, you don't find restrictions like if it's an Android tablet where you got to find just the right software or what have you. This can very easily, my old one can, so I'm sure this new one can too, run Adobe Premiere Pro, Photoshop, obviously the Office suite of programs, all sorts of different things, Audacity to record and edit sound, all sorts of programs. I've never really found it limited in that respect. So this is an investment. So if you don't have 2,500 Canadian kicking around and you want to get a tablet, there are lower spec options available that you might want to consider. And like I said, even if you go with an i5 core, even with half the RAM, even with half the hard drive space, I'm still able to edit in 4K. So this is just a bit of an upgrade for me. Part of it is to make the process a little easier, a little faster, and deal with some of those failing ports I had on my very old over four-year-old uh, Surface Pro. Uh, but this is also an investment in the future. Uh, my Pro 7 getting on to four plus years. So by upgrading now and hopefully upgrading with slightly improved specs over the minimum, this should last me a good four or five additional years is my expectation. But enough of me talking. Let's just dive in and open this sucker up and see how great this looks because I think it's going to look pretty great. This is going to be my uh, fourth Surface. I got an RT when it first came out, I got a Surface 3, I got a Pro 7, and now my Pro 9. So let's dive right in. So um, I'm going to put the keyboard aside for now. I'm going to start off with obviously the tablet itself, and it's uh, shrink-wrapped, so I'm just going to use a little friction to get that open. And um, I did order this through the Microsoft uh, Canada website, and it shipped to me within a couple of business days, which was pretty quick. And it, sh it shipped via uh, FedEx, which was fine. The keyboard showed up faster than the tablet, so that's been waiting a little bit longer. I I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of the box design. It feels like they're trying to look like an Apple product, and Microsoft is something different. And I, I wish Microsoft would stop trying to look more like Apple. 
Oh, Microsoft needs to be its own thing. We need diversity of options in the tech space. So uh, Microsoft, be Microsoft. Microsoft initially was all about empowering people. Uh, they believed that a computer in every home could empower the little guy to go up against big business. And as a small YouTuber, I kind of feel like I'm still fighting that fight. And it was also made for the hobbyists, people who like to learn about things and configure them the right way and get the maximum out of them. Whereas Apple is supposed to be, you know, put the dent in the universe, but make it easy to use. And you don't have to know a whole lot to just open it and it should work kind of all the time whereas this microsoft's philosophy was more about um you know people will educate and empower themselves do their own upgrades things like that and that's more my style and how i like to operate so minor little rant about microsoft versus apple there um but obviously uh and it's probably pretty well known that when it comes to microsoft products intel products pc you're generally paying a fair price for the processing power whereas with apple you're paying a premium for something that doesn't quite have the same horsepower behind it and might not be quite cutting edge in terms of the hardware. So that's something to consider. It's another reason why I really prefer the Windows products. So let's just open this up here. Got a bit of a suction thing going on. Okay, there we go. Ah, uh, there she is. Now this, this box has some heft to it, and this is going to be a, a little over 800 grams in weight, according to what I was reading, and my old Surface 7 was a little over 700 grams in weight, so I am expecting this tablet to be a bit heavier, but it's still, I'm expecting to be really effective for travel, where I can just slide it into my backpack and go. Uh, so there's a little tab here to help pop it out. I'm going to be careful here because when I first got my first Surface, the RT, years upon years upon years ago, the first thing is I, I did is I opened it and I dropped it and I cracked the bezel. <laughs> so I'm going to be extra careful with this one. I'm not making that mistake again. I learned from my mistakes. So we're just going to pop that up there. Well, this is interesting. So there's a cover on the surface here, and it's got little icons that tell you what's where. Uh, so there's a power thing here. It looks like uh, the same kind of power plug I think the surface has been using for a while now. Uh, microphone, microphone, so you can get stereo sound on the recording there. Uh, there is a camera, but also a smiley face. So I believe that this is the camera that will go probably both ways in terms of the selfie or the forward picture, the, the, the front or backward facing. There's the volume control here, which is good. Uh, and so quieter towards the middle, louder on the outside, which is interesting because um, uh, they've reversed that over the different generations of Surface, and I still sometimes get a little confused and accidentally turn the sound up when I meant to turn it down. Uh, and we've got the power there. And there are these two lightning bolt icons here. Now, it's not going to be lightning. That's a proprietary port that Apple has. Um, oh, that is interesting. That is interesting. Huh. I'm not seeing USB. I'm going to have to get a dongle. Huh. So there are, the, there are two ports here, but these don't look like standard USB. They might be USB-C. Huh, that is interesting. Hmm. Because my understanding is one of the things that they have changed with this Surface is there's no longer a micro SD port. And yeah, that seems to be the case. So expandable memory, not really easily accessible. I had picked up uh, a low profile USB here uh, because I knew that there would be no micro SD, but... Um, this was going to be my, my, my hard drive expansion solution. This doesn't look like that's going to work, so that's a little problematic. Another thing I'm noticing, and this I was aware of in advance, is that there is no headphone port, no 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And so I did pick up on a recent trip of mine some wireless earbuds. These were 20 bucks. I picked them up uh, in Halifax at the cruise terminal on, a, on my last cruise. So um, yeah, I'm going to go with Bluetooth for the sound. Uh, so this is kind of interesting. Uh, let's just take this cover off and take a look. Oh, yeah, it makes a nice sound there. So yeah, it, it's got a little bit more weight to it than my old Surface Pro 7. Uh, and one thing I noticed is that the screen goes really, really close to the edge. There's not a whole lot of bezel on the side. So when you're holding it, when you're gripping it, you're going to want to be careful not to accidentally press part of the screen. Up and down, you've got a little bit more space, but less than on my last Surface. So in terms of the screen as a percentage of the overall device, it seems quite a bit higher. Okay, so that's interesting. Let's see what else is in the box. I'm going to carefully put the, the tablet over there. Uh, let's see. I think this is probably a little icon there. It looks like documents. It's probably just a Microsoft Surface Pro 9 safety and regulatory guide. 
And is this like a card? Oh, and it explains. Okay, so volume, power, Windows Hello camera. Okay, that's what the smiley face was. Uh, I know that you can uh, choose to unlock devices with your face or with your fingerprint and other devices. I'm not. I'm a password kind of guy, so I'm not big on the biometrics personally. Uh, but it looks like it's got that studio mics. Studio is an interesting choice of words. Surface Connect port. Um, so that's the power and then the front facing camera. And so that lightning bolt, it says Thunderbolt 4 slash USB 4, which is interesting because I did some research beforehand. I was expecting USB ports on this. Um, USB 4, Thunderbolt, might be USB C. Might have to go back to the drawing board with this whole thing about that storage, which is a shame because uh, I picked that up in advance. Uh, this here, I think, is going to be the power adapter. This is, uh, it feels more compact and lightweight than the previous adapter uh, for my Surface Pro 7. So um, that would be nice because that thing is pretty hefty. Okay, so we've got sort of the cable here that goes from the box to the wall. And just pull this out here. Okay. And so, yeah, this is the part that plugs into the tablet, and then this plugs into this, into the wall. There is also, interesting to note, a USB port here. So this is similar to the previous generation's power. I believe the plug, uh, it looks the same. I think it would be compatible with the older generations. Um, but one thing that's really nice about how Microsoft has chosen to do their power supplies, uh, there's two nice things. One, there's the USB here. So if you wanted to charge your phone or a camera, camera or something at the same time as you have your tablet plugged in you don't have to daisy chain through the tablet by connecting the device to the tablet to the power you can just connect the usb directly here and so it's like an extra power outlet that you take with you everywhere which is nice as well uh, this little box here is important if you travel overseas. Uh, as I actually covered in a video on my Vacation Impossible channel, when you travel overseas, there are different power plugs and different voltage. And so you can have an adapter that will change the shape of the plug so you can plug your device in. But if you don't have something that converts the power, you could blow up your device. And so this little box here, what this does is this converts the power as well, which means that I could take this anywhere in the world and I only need an adapter adapter, I don't need a power converter because it's right here. Uh, and so that is very useful for someone who travels like I do. Uh, and I sometimes go on trips for two, three weeks at a time. And so having less to lug around is a big advantage and not having to worry about power conversion. So that's pretty nice. Um, so there we have it so far. That uh, is everything in the box. And so... A couple of things that I had beforehand. I already mentioned my wireless earbuds. I do recommend having wireless earbuds because there is no audio port on this. Uh, another thing that I had from previous is I have a Microsoft Arc mouse, uh, which is actually really cool. You just bend it and it connects Bluetooth wirelessly. Uh, and the, the battery drain on this, this takes uh, AAAs, if you can believe it. They actually fit in there. Uh, and it drains so slowly. I only have to pop out the batteries like maybe once every nine to 12 to 18 months. And I use it fairly regularly. So that's kind of awesome. Um, and so these are two accessories I think that you absolutely need if you're going to be getting a Surface like this and using it for editing. Wireless earbuds and a Bluetooth mouse, absolutely. Uh, but in terms of men memory expansion, uh, I'm going back to the drawing board on that. And I have to say, I'm a little disappointed that it doesn't have a standard USB port on the tablet itself. I don't even know if they make low pro profile USB-C, USB 4 memory. Uh, so I might have to get a converter, which kind of kills the low profile or a dongle. I really don't want a dongle. I hate dongles. I hate having to bring additional things uh, just to connect stuff. So I'm really hoping that that's not too much of an issue. So, uh, so far, I'm, you know, I'm pleased with the look of it and the weight of it uh, and the design of it seems very sleek, very modern, very professional. Um, but I am disappointed at the lack of a standard USB port. And it would have been nice if it still had an audio jack uh, because this just means I have one more thing I got to keep powered separately and remember to power it. And that can be a bit of a headache, especially if maybe you forgot to keep it powered and then you need it. So that's a little bit unfortunate there because I can understand how, you know, they want to try and make it as uh, sleek and as powerful uh, as possible. So they would need to streamline the design to probably keep costs down and also reduce the power drain and things like that. But uh, an audio jack would, would clearly still fit here. Um, US, a standard USB port might be a little too big. 
I could see that being the case. Um, just kind of comparing the thickness of the USB port. Yeah, that's about as thick as the tablet itself. It's like 90% of the thickness of the tablet. So I could see why a USB port could be problematic because that is really thin. Uh, and so that's kind of nice. It probably helps keep the weight down. Um, so, uh, you know, let me know if you have any questions in the comments about the tablet. I'm going to be using it right away. Uh, but I am confident that it will definitely be powerful enough to do the kind of editing that I need and want to do. And uh, there's one more thing, though. Uh, but wait, there's more. I did get the keyboard. Uh, it is, I think, pretty essential to get the keyboard uh, when you're doing editing. Uh, you know, you're making thumbnails. You're going to be typing text into that. You might be writing a description, uploading, doing SEO research, maybe chat negotiations with a sponsorship or something, a company maybe. Who knows? Unfortunately, this video is not sponsored. Microsoft doesn't know who I am yet. But uh, you can always help by subscribing to the channel, clicking like on this video, and don't forget to add your comment down below. Um, but uh, I, this is really important for a couple of reasons. I've always gotten a keyboard with my Surface Tab. And part of it is, um, yeah, the functionality of the touchpad and the keyboard, but also the fact that it basically operates as a screen protector. Uh, and so that can be pretty important. So let's see about busting open this keyboard here. And there's a pull tab. Oh, which allows, it kind of like rips the stuff for you. That's kind of cool. So um, there are a couple of keyboards. This is the signature keyboard, which is the lower cost. A um, little over $200 Canadian. Uh, for that. Package contains English key layout. Well, that's good, because that's what I wanted. Uh, as a Canadian, sometimes you accidentally get French stuff, so. There's also uh, a hang tab here that you can just pull to open that up. Okay, so I ordered the black, and I was like, oh no, white keyboard, but no, I think this is just uh, cardboard protection padding. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's what that was. Warning, parts of this device are magnetic. It might be it might have tried oh wait that's that is that's common it's been that way since forever and a day uh with the keyboards is this is a magnet so that when you want to connect it to your tablet it will just kind of connect like that and so there you go now you've got that protective cover there and that's got that's got a nice look to it um that's interesting how it kind of aligns but yeah no that that's good uh, and so it's got this, it's nice, it's kind of like almost velvety, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Um, and so that looks that looks nice. And then you pop it open. The keys are a good size. The touchpad looks bigger or about the same size as my uh, keyboard for my 7. Uh, but this looks good. They feel really responsive. That's got a good feel to it. So... Um, yeah, there we go. That's interesting. Let's uh, let's put it on the table just so you can kind of see it in action. Uh, the surfaces for a, a few generations now have this this uh, kickstand. It used to like lock at particular percentages of angle or whatever uh, at particular angles, but now you can set it and it, it's pretty firm at any angle, so you can set it exactly how you need it. And you can pop up the keyboard there for a little extra lift. But there you have it. There is the Microsoft Surface Pro Nine. Um, so let me know in the comments, do you have this tablet? Has it worked well for you? What do you use to edit on the road, on the go? Or do you? Do you use your phone? Do you have a different tablet? Uh, or just not edit on the road? Maybe this might be a good thing to consider getting. I will have uh, some Amazon links. There'll be affiliate links in the description uh, if you're interested in getting any of this, whether it's the USB memory uh, that you can't use with this tablet, uh, the Arc uh, mouse, or uh, these... Uh, these uh, wireless uh, earbuds at a very reasonable price, the keyboard, and of course the Surface itself. So uh, thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot of other useful videos here for creators. So if you're trying to get more subscribers on YouTube, more views on YouTube, or you're having trouble staying motivated, we've got videos that cover all of that fairly in depth, uh, and I'll have some links in the description and info cards, things like that. So I do recommend checking out those videos if you haven't already. We also have a trilogy of videos on SEO, that's search engine optimization. If you want your content to be found on the internet, almost regardless of platform, those videos will be really helpful in helping you crafting titles, descriptions, and tags for your videos or your blog posts or whatever else you might be creating to help them actually get found by people who are searching for content like what you make. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.